what does it mean to become a narcissist's nightmare? And what's this idea that you should be thinking in this way, right? So what's going on in your world and your life where you need to actually watch a video like this or listen to speakers like me or read the types of books that I put out or watch my types of videos. What's going on in your life and in your heart and in your mind and in your relationships where you are drawn to learning about a narcissist or a codependency or self-care or self-empowerment? Most of the time we're drawn to information because of obviously something that's going on in our life. It resonates with us. And one of the things that so many of us who have struggled with narcissistic abuse struggle with is feeling of oppression. And we end up being the people who defend the people who are being bullied because we can't stand feeling oppressed. We end up being the uh, crusaders in life. Dun, dun, dun. We put on our cape and we want to go rescue the animals in the shelter. And we want to point the finger where there's oppression happening. We want to be the whistleblowers in life. We want to call out the narcissist, call out the bad guy. We want to point the finger and tell everybody what they should be looking at. And they have to understand, you have to understand there's a narcissist in your life or it's not you, it's, it's your mom or it's not you, it's your ex-husband. It's not you, it's your kid. Your kid's a giant narcissist and he and she is take, they're taking advantage of you. We want to be those people because why? We are, lots of times, we are struggling with a sense of oppression. We're feeling oppressed. We're feeling controlled. We're feeling confused. And so things like what's happening with COVID really tick us off, right? Our liberties feel like they're being taken advantage of. Like we just feel like we're being forced to do things that we don't want to do. Now, in my opinion, the stronger of a push you have when it comes to comes to this idea of being oppressed, the more you have felt oppressed. And that means the more you have silenced your own voice. There are beliefs that are running your life that are subconscious and remember, I really wish people would just accept this because it would make life a whole lot easier. Your subconscious mind is far more stronger than your conscious mind. That's why I say in my masterclass, your beliefs will always win out over a will. I don't care how many good affirmations you do or how many amazing affirmations you do, okay? I don't care how positive a thinker you think you are. If you have some unhealed, yucky stuff in your heart space, you cannot create brain and heart cohesiveness. You can't, cohesion, you can't. You can't have this integrated and then step into this personal power and manifest the relationships you want or the health that you want, or the career that you want, or the abundance or the wealth that you want. You can't do it, right? I don't care how many times I say, I wanna be, I wanna be wealthy, I wanna be healthy, I wanna attract the divine mate. That's all up here. What matters is below the veil. How do I feel about wanting to manifest a relationship? How do I feel about ending this toxic relationship? Do I think I can end this toxic relationship? Am I worried about what my narcissist is going to do once I end the relationship? That is where your nose should not be. Your nose should not be worrying what the narcissist is going to do once you leave him or once you leave her. No bueno. You're sticking your nose into the tail of the karmic wheel and you're going to get caught up in that, right? But how many of us aren't thinking properly and really aren't using our minds the way that we really should be. We were all intended to live a subconscious life and to live on autopilot. How do I know that? I know that because there's a default mode network in the brain it sits right behind the eyes. And when you are not engaged in learning mode, which requires a lot of attention, you are in default mode. You know what's in default mode? Anything that you have been conditioned to believe anything that you have been conditioned to feel, anything that you've been conditioned to think, Pavlovian conditioning. It is so, unfortunately, it's very easy to condition a human being to believe something that is counter to their personal growth. Just use fear. Let me explain. So if you want to become a narcissist nightmare, then you have to be willing to become 
everything, this is huge, dear ones, I hope you're listening, you have to be willing to become the exact thing the narcissist has conditioned you to be afraid of being. Let me explain. When I was first married, in my first marriage, I was told I was crazy, you're a wacko, no one thinks like you. You're selfish because you're not happy. Everything's about your feelings. You're ungrateful. You know why you're ungrateful, Lisa? Because you live in a nice house. And I don't drink, and I don't smoke, and I don't beat you. What more could you want? Look at the nice house you live in. The kids are healthy. We have a business. You're crazy because you want more. You're crazy because I'm not enough. You're crazy because you want more from me. What is this stuff you want? You want a connected relationship. What you want doesn't even exist, Lisa. You're crazy. Everybody thinks you're crazy. You see, my first husband, God bless his soul, conditioned me to be afraid to open my mouth. So I adapted to the fear. You know why? Because human beings are very easily programmed. All you have to do is get them to be afraid of something. Don't believe me? What did Hitler do? Hitler made, made people afraid not to be like him, right? What does a narcissist do? A narcissist conditions you to be afraid to not adapt to what they think and what they feel, right? So if you're somebody who, let's say, you are celebrated in your field, the narcissist is intimidated by your um, level of success. You know what the narcissist does? They get inside your head. They get you to be afraid of being proud of your success. Look at you. You think you're so full of yourself. You think everybody loves you. You think everybody wants to listen to you, right? Look at you, your big head. You know what? You know what the problem is with you? You're just full of yourself, right? So now I can't enjoy what I've created because the narcissist has caused me to be afraid of thinking there's something wrong with being proud of myself. So a narcissist gets inside your head and they condition you to be afraid of what they're actually afraid of which is your ability to love yourself, your ability to self-care, your ability to say no, right? If you live with someone who says, you know, you're so difficult, you're so emotional, you make a big deal out of nothing, out of nothing, you're such a negative person. Do you know what's happened? Because human beings are programmable and they are very easily conditioned when you put them into survival mode. You know what happens? And this is why I think it's so unfair. And this is what gets me motivated in the morning to sit in this chair and create more work for people who don't understand the power really is within them. You don't have to listen to this crap that other people tell you to listen to. You don't have to be afraid of anything. Fear is meant for you to crush it. Fear is meant for you to go, oh, that's where I stumble. Oh, that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, that's what I have to address. Oh, that's what I have to conquer for me to get on the other side, for me to attract um, wealth, health, joy, peace, the right relationships, the right partnerships, the right friendships, the right place to live, the right community, right? Oh, this is what I have to face. But that's not what our brain naturally does. When we're in survival mode, we shut down, right? Cortisol gets kicked out. We go into survival mode. Think about the four stress responses. We fight, we flee, we freeze, and we fawn, right? None of those things are helping us break through. They prevent more fear, or they prevent us from experiencing um, going too far out, outside our comfort zone, zone where we don't think we can control <clears throat> this stress response. So one of, those, one of those four stress responses, we have been conditioned, and it resides in the default mode network, We've been conditioned to think that that's, that's how we stay safe. In my mother's case, if my father slammed his fist on the table, my mother would get quiet. Why? Instead of saying, who are you slamming the table at? Who do you think you are telling me what to do? I don't have to listen to you. This is irrational. You're acting like a two-year-old. My mother would never do that. What my mother did was she went into the fawning response. She got small. She, sh she shrank because of the stress response, right? So her whole life, Below the veil of consciousness, she thinks the answer is to acquiesce, is to subjugate, and to be agreeable. She didn't realize how stuck she was, and she didn't realize the power to change her life, and maybe even her relationship, was within her. She stayed stuck. What happens when you're in a relationship with someone who's highly narcissistic is you're not realizing you're being brainwashed to be afraid 
and you're being and when you are afraid of being what the narcissist accuses you of, you're arrested. You adapt to the fear. So in other words, you're, you're called difficult. You're called a pain in the neck. You're called a drama queen. You are naturally afraid of being seen as difficult. So what do you do? You shut up. You subjugate yourself, right? You acquiesce. You people fawn. You try to gain a narcissist's validation while at the same time, you're fearing the negative oh, outcome. Oh, I hope he doesn't see me this way. I hope she doesn't think I'm difficult. Oh, I, I hope I'm not seen as rude. You incapacitate your ability to set boundaries. And without boundaries, you cannot live a bold life. Because to live a bold life, you have to know who you are. You have to know what your worth is. But if you're afraid of what people think about you, if you allow the programming of a narcissist to adapt or if you adapt to what the narcissist is saying, then you can spend 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years being afraid of being what the narcissist has programmed you to be afraid of being. I can tell you that I listened to it my entire life. This is not a poor me session. This is a reality me session, okay? Because I have learned to tell the truth and I know what happens when you do tell the truth. People turn on you. People who love your mother, people who love your father, people who love your family, right? People who don't want to deal with their own stuff. They go, oh, look at her, shooting her mouth off, want, wanting attention, wanting people to believe her. I know what happens, right? And you know what? You got to get to a point where you realize, like, whose life are you going to live? Are you going to live your life for someone else or the fear of what someone else is going to say about you? Or are you going to live your life in spite of what someone else says about you? My whole life I heard you're selfish. My whole life I heard you're a liar. My whole life I heard you're over emotional. And then when I was when I thought, okay, mommy says I cry too much, or mommy says I want too much attention, then I guess the answer is to have no needs. So I'll just shut down and I'll be quiet. And I won't say anything. And when I feel like crying watching this Disney movie, I won't. I'll swallow my tears because I want my mom to see that I'm not over emotional. And then you know what happens? Mommy says, look at Lisa. She's a cold fish. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to be? When you are this detached from the people who are supposed to hold you in the cusp of their palms, right? In the chalice of their hearts, they're supposed to encourage you to be everything that you are innately. And when you are pushed away and pushed away and criticized, you develop one of the four response systems to stress. In my case, I went through, a, I think I went through all stages. There was a time where I froze. There was a time I fawned. There was a, there was a time I ran away from everything. And there was a time I was fighting like, what'd you say? What, 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 you know, like I had a big chip on my shoulder. And that was because I was so raw on the inside. I was afraid that you might hurt me, right? But it was all a trauma response until I finally took the time to figure out what was going on with me. And that meant I had to tell my truth. And that meant that I had to face the fact that my family was going to publicly say everything that I was afraid they were going to say. My worst fears were going to come true. They were going to abandon me. They were going to challenge me. They were going to say she's crazy, right? I had to face that. And then when I married my ex-husband, what happened? Because we all attract our childhood experiences. I was called crazy. I was called a flake. I was called a wacko. I was called a knucklehead, right? Every name in the book, you know, and when I was dating, oh, you're a, you just care about the flesh, right? So having dinner was turned into this um, really nasty, shady experience because that was in his head. Right. So I was afraid to even date because, oh, people are going to think that I'm some loosey goosey, floozy something, you know, whatever. But I was being conditioned to be afraid of dating. I didn't even realize it. Right. I was being conditioned to be afraid to speak my truth. We have to be very, very careful as human beings because we ha you have to understand the default mode network is real. So you were created for autopilot, which is a brilliant design as long as you're conscious of it. If you're not conscious of it, you will fall victim to it. You also have to recognize how easy it is to manipulate human beings because of survival mode. Anything that threatens your, your, your survival 
someone else, if they're doing it on purpose, they're going to be able to manipulate you, right? That's why I don't fall, I don't enjoy politics on either side that are all fear-based. So I don't care if you're on the left side, the right side. If you're trying to make me afraid of someone or something, I'm probably going to fall to deaf ears, you know, because I understand that that is such a manipulative tool. That's just me, right? So everybody can feel differently. It's a big world out there. It's, what, 7 billion, 8 billion people. You're allowed to have your own perspective. That's just my perspective. And so when we're children, we're being brainwashed to be afraid of the no, no talk rule. Whatever happens in this house stays in this house. Oh, I'm, I'm beating you. You can't go to the school and tell the teacher. You fell. You've got a bruise on your cheek. Don't, go, don't tell the nurse how you really got that bruise. Oh, your brother's an alcoholic? Shh, don't tell anyone. We don't want to embarrass your brother. No, I should just stuff this reality and stuff the reality that everybody is catering to this alcoholic who continues to make the wrong decisions. You are enabling this person, not getting this person the right help they need because we got to be quiet about it. We can't talk about it, right? No chance. That we're, at, that we're going to be able to help our alcoholic brother who our parents are enabling because they don't want to embarrass him and they don't want to be embarrassed. It's really about them. They don't want to be embarrassed, right? That they have a son who's struggling. So many people are struggling and the less fear and shame that we have over struggling with bulimia and anorexia and alcoholism or, you know, medic prescription drugs or whatever it is, the less shame we have over struggling with these addictions, the less shame we have when our siblings are struggling with these addictions or our spouses are struggling with our addictions or our friends, the less shame that we have, the more able we are to get people who need the help, the help that they need. Now, when you live with people who conditioned you to not speak up for yourself, you must understand your survival has been threatened. When someone says, when you grow up and don't talk about this, shh, daddy's really not drunk, or shh, daddy really didn't push mommy down the stairs, or shh, mommy isn't really a rageaholic, or shh, mommy really didn't just kiss your boyfriend. When we're taught to be afraid to speak these truths, right, what we're really afraid of is abandonment. We're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of what this, this first line of defense, the people that are supposed to love us, right? It's like our first skin. They're supposed to love us. We know if we don't play by the rules, they're going to reject us or they're going to, the, the skin is going to become so constricting that it's going to be hard for us to breathe, right? We know that. We're not stupid. Our brains know. Uh-oh, I can't say that. Why? Because on a subconscious level, or if you want to think about it on an automatic level, right? We have pain versus pleasure. We have survival mode, right? We have needs. And so when a need is threatened, I go into survival mode. All subconscious. And that's why I think that the mental health field has got to move into explaining this to every person that walks through the door. So that you and me, our children, our grandparents, whoever, when they walk in and they speak to a mental health professional, the mental health professional is saying to them, do you understand how your brain responds to trauma? Do you know it's automatic? Do you know it's not even your fault that you didn't leave your narcissistic husband? It's not your fault. Do you know that the shame that showed up because you stayed, right? Even though you stayed because of a default setting, you're afraid, right? And when the brain is overwhelmed with fear, it can't even think rationally. So you couldn't even make decisions that were in your best interest because of the way the brain works. And by the way, the more trauma you experience as a child, the greater your threshold for BS in your relationships today. Suddenly, I'm sitting there and I don't feel so unusual. Suddenly, who I am starts to make sense. Now, all of a sudden, I'm out of anxiety mode, which is survival, and I'm listening. And now I'm in learning mode, so which shifts me out of anxiety mode. Now I'm like, okay, so me staying made sense, right? Yes. Now you understand a little bit deeper ideas about codependency. Codependents generally don't leave their relationships. They know they suck. They know they, they're painful. They may even know that they've manifested someone on the narcissistic spectrum. They may even recognize themselves as a reactive, angry, frustrated, codependent that's like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I just keep doing the same things and expecting a different result. You may even think you may even know that's who you are, but you don't know how to fix it. And then someone comes along and says, 
you can only play with the tools that are in the shed. So if you don't have these life skills because you were programmed to stay, you don't need to be ashamed of that. You literally don't have that piece of information. You don't have that data. Human beings don't come here knowing how to think, right? A cell phone doesn't operate itself. I mean, it needs someone to say, okay, call Mary or call Sue or, or call Johnny. Or, it needs an operator, right? You have to understand the apps on your cell phone. Then you can work it properly. We're born with this amazing machine, our brain, right? And no one teaches us how to use it. And if our parents are stuck and live a life of addiction, of narcissism, of codependency, of fear, if they live in a lack mentality, if they're afraid of everything, we have been downloaded to think like they do. So it's not us, it's just our programming. But getting to that point, that's a huge aha, that's a breakthrough, right? So you're here living a small life because you're afraid to, and women have, sorry men, I just gotta say it like it is though, I'm sure men struggle with this too, but women have been taught they need to be docile, to be liked. They should be ladylike. And they should make a man feel big about themselves, right? Right? We should make men feel good about themselves. That's our job, right? Who the hell is making us feel good about us? If we're giving to the kids and we're giving to, the, to our husbands and we're giving to our aging parents and we're giving to our in-laws aging, their aging, so we're giving to them, we're giving to the school, how the hell, are, who, who is supporting us? right? And then when we step out and we st st start to like set a boundary, think about the names are called. She's a biatch. She's this, she's that. We even turn on one another as women, right? Why? Because culturally women have been conditioned, hello, Mr. Walt Disney, to dislike one woman over the other, to think about the uh, queen in S Snow White, who is angry because Snow White is beautiful and she's young been conditioned early. We don't even realize we're being taught to fear getting old. Hello, white hair. Okay. I'm going to get white hair. I do have white hair. Whatever. That's not a sin. It's natural. But I'm talking about how society, how the media, how a narcissist, how your parents, your friends, whoever can get you to be afraid. And if you step into the soup of fear, survival mode kicks in, subconscious thinking cut kicks in, you're not thinking, you're adapting to the fear. You're trying to figure out how to, how not to experience that fear. How do I not be white haired? How do I not age? You know, how do I not be seen as a biatch? How do I not make people angry? How do I keep my husband happy or, or keep my girlfriend happy? How do, how, 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 do, how do I make everybody else around me happy? How do I do this? How do I, right? All below the veil of consciousness, all reactivity. And how do we, live a bold life? How do we live an empowered life if we're afraid of the thing that we seek? Because the thing that we seek comes with so many conflicts. Beliefs always went out over the will. So I might want to live an amazing life. I might want to have the most amazing relationship. I might want to look a certain way. I might want to live in a different, different house. I might want to make more money. But if I'm afraid of what all those things mean because someone has taught me I don't have a right to want I have a conflict I cannot have integration right um, I cannot have co um, coherence like this this cohesive body mind heart experience I can't and that's you know, the, the Bible says a house divided cannot stand alone this is what we're talking about when you have a belief and it lies in conflict to your will it's not going to manifest. And that's not because the law of attraction is broken, people. The law of attraction is always working. It's always operating. It's just people think, oh, because I'm not getting what I want, it's broken. So I'm not going to try anymore. No, 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 no. You try until you have a coherent Reality. In other words, when you become mind, body, and soul, I want this thing, I'm deserving of this thing, 
and I'm going to go after that thing until I achieve it. Nothing's going to stop me from achieving it. And I don't care about what that neighbor to the right says or not that neighbor to the left says. I don't care what my ex-husband says. I don't care what my mother says. I don't care what my father says. I don't care what society says. I have a right to want blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do it. Okay. And everybody else can go jump in the lake. They're responsible for their reality. I am responsible for my reality. You can have any opinion of me that you want. You can think I'm selfish. Go ahead. There, by the way, there's enough for everybody, right? There's more than enough for everybody. The problem is you don't think you're worth it. Or the problem is you're afraid to step out boldly and to deal with the conflicts that show up when you say, I'd like more. You're afraid to ask more from your boss. You're thinking, well, at least I have a job, you know. Um, you don't want your job to see you as pushy or you know, maybe you don't believe if you have, if you believe that you're worthy of a, a pay raise and you believe that you put your best foot forward at work and you believe that someone else is being passed, you are being passed over for someone else. It's the not asking that's the problem, because if you believe that you're worthy of it, right, and you go to work and you put your best foot forward, you expecting to be oh, we're going to give her a raise or we're going to give him a raise and you don't have to step out boldly and ask for it, you're sadly mistaken because it's the people who ask that actually receive, right? Ask, believe, receive. So many of us play it short. Oh, I'm just going to wait here and, and um, they'll see me. I'm just going to keep working my little tail off and eventually I'll get that raise. It doesn't work that way. It's the person that is doing half the work you're doing that walks in feeling, you know, I got this. You know, listen, I'd like to buy, um, I'd like to get a new apartment and I need an extra thousand bucks a month to make that happen. I'm going to walk into the boss's office. I'm going to tell the boss how I feel about my work performance. I'm going to ask for some feedback. Is there anything you'd like to, you think I should work on? But I'm ready for more. I'm ready for more challenges. And I would also like to be compensated for that, you know, um, in terms of salary. They ask, they believe, and they receive. I know I played it small. I was the wallflower, you know, trying to avoid attention. Why? Because my skin hurt. Why? Because my family liked to pick at my skin. And so why? So I played it small because I thought if I play it small, then I'll avoid more trauma. You see? So it wasn't that the law of attraction was broken. I want this amazing life. It was that I was afraid of what it meant to step into that amazing life. And you know what? <laughs> I wasn't stupid because the minute you start telling your truth, they come for you. You are attacked. People who think you should just shut your mouth. You shouldn't air your dirty laundry. I had people say, how could you talk about your family like this in the book, The Road Back to Me? I was like, that's my story. That actually happened to me. I'm allowed to talk about this story. I remember, God rest her soul, when my sister-in-law who passed away from cancer, she said something to me that was so bizarre. She said, you had no right to talk to my brother about the problem that you and I had. And I just looked at her and I was like, mm, and I was young. I was, but I knew this was wrong. I said, I'm sorry, but I really have to disagree with you. If you and I have a problem and you are accusing me of something that I am not guilty of, I have every right in the world to talk to whomever, whenever, about whatever, I want, which includes the conversation that I've just had with you. I have that right. I was cognizant, cognizant enough to know that's wrong. She's trying to silence me. She's telling me I have no right to talk about a problem that I have with her. I didn't know it was the no talk rule, but I just felt with every ounce of my being, this girl's trying to silence me. She's trying to make me, hey, listen, you don't want me talking about you. You should be nice. Or if you want me to say nice things about you, you should be nice. You shouldn't be rude. You shouldn't be mean. You shouldn't be grossly, you know, grossly um, neglectful in your dealing with me. I have a right to talk to whoever, whenever I want to about anything, you know? But this was trying to silence me. And this is why we have to be, it's so multi layered, you know? And if you want to learn more about this, please visit my website at www.lisaaramano.com. 
you know, the on-demand 12-week breakthrough coaching program can help you break through all of these layers. The first week is about understanding what went wrong. I mean, the first module. The second module is about where is my power in this? Where, who? What? Wh how did this power get ripped from me? And how do I get it back? So that's what module two is about. And module three is about fine-tuning everything that you learn so that you can live that bold life. You cannot, you cannot dig a hole without a shovel. I mean, you could try, but how far are you going to get using your fingers? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You need tools, and it's not your fault that you don't have tools. But the amazing thing is, the amazing thing is that this is not something that you cannot learn. This is learnable, and I can tell you, you will be fierce mofos. I'm telling you, when you learn how to say to a narcissist, you're right, I'm selfish. You're right. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. I only think about myself. You're right. I am difficult. You're right. You're right. My feelings do matter. You're right. You're right. I would like to have an opinion. I have opinions. You're right. You're absolutely right. The narcissist brain farts. The narcissist brain doesn't know how to compute what you're saying. You mean you're not afraid? that people are going to think you're difficult? You're not afraid that I'm going to talk about you behind your back? No, I actually know you're a narcissist. I expect you to triangulate me. Silly. I expect you to create a smear campaign. And I expect there will be a certain amount of flying monkeys that believe you. But you know what? I'm going to love you anyway. Namaste and walk away. I'm not going to focus on the things that you have to say because that's what you want me to do. You want to pull me into the mud. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see you. I see you. I'm not going to let you do that anymore. So talk away. Criticize away. Smear away. Knock yourself out because you know what? You're only creating more karma for yourself. You're not looking at yourself. Oh, you want to try to take me down? What a shame, because the only person that you're really hurting is really yourself. Now that I'm awakened, now that I know that I actually have to become what you have taught me to be afraid of being in your eyes. You have conditioned me to be afraid. And guess what? I'm not afraid anymore. So bring on the tools, bring on the lessons, because this is what I want for my life. So you have a right to live boldly. You have a right for health, for wealth, for prosperity, to live a mission-driven life, a life of purpose. You have a right to bring purpose into everything you do, every person you speak, everywhere you go. You have a right to bring yourself into that experience. You have absolutely have the right to do that. But you have to understand that human beings are very easily conditioned through the fear response. So if you live with someone who's a narcissist who says, oh, you're complaining about that again? I thought you were smarter than that. I can't believe you thought that. Wow, that's really interesting. Didn't you say you went to college? What university did you graduate from? All these little condescending little things that they say, they zing you so that you can't stand in your power. You can't use your intellect. You've been hijacked, right? Fight or flight has been activated, so you can't think logically. That's why it's so important to understand how your brain works. So in my 12-week class, I blend the science of the brain. We talk about spiritual um, aspects. We talk about the psychology of a, an inner child that becomes an adolescent, that shifts into an adult, that just rolls this perception over into adulthood. And how living below the veil of consciousness, which is automatic, by the way, even the Bible says all men are born asleep. No joke. You were born asleep. You are not born conscious. Consciousness is something that must be activated. You must become born again in your mind. You must reframe the way you see yourself. You're not a snail. You're a powerful creator being. But And the potential to be anything that you want is sown within you. But when the phone, the app, think about your brain as a phone app or a phone. When an app in your brain says you're not a powerful creator, you're a worm, and you need to be afraid of X, Y, and Z, and it's bad to tell your truth, and it's bad to go after your dreams, and you're selfish for wanting more, 
And you know what? You don't have a right to want more. You don't have a right to charge this. You don't have a right to charge that, right? Whatever it is, or you should do whatever you do. You should continue doing it for free, right? When you, because God forbid you charge for it, you're seen as a selfish person, right? But, but look at the people in the world that are charging away, charging away, right? And they have mission-driven businesses, but you might be afraid to charge for a Reiki session. You might be afraid to charge for a yoga session. You might be afraid to charge for an energy healing session. You're afraid, right? Ask yourself why you are afraid. Or you might be afraid to charge to walk your friend's dog or walk a dog. It's a service. You're making someone else's life easier. This is the way energy works, right? So we have to really get to the root of what is really preventing us from stepping out and living a bold life. Because if you can uncover that, then you can create the life that you really, really deserve. And you have to know that you're deserving. It makes no sense to be born with this brain, with this heart, with this mind, with these eyes, with this mouth, with these ears, with these fingers, with this stomach, with this amazing internal immune system, this amazing guidance system. It makes no sense to not, to, to not live in a 3D world out loud what has been infused in me um, on a vibrational level, what is true for me. If, I'm, if I feel like being a ballerina, I assure you, I do not. I don't think like a ballerina. I certainly don't eat like a ballerina. I don't look like a ballerina. And I certainly don't move like a ballerina. But if I felt like a ballerina and I was drawn to the ballet and I was drawn to these movements and this type of special music or unique music, if I felt like I expressed myself mostly through ballet, you bet your butt that I have been born to make that happen. If I have born to people who think this way in an expanded way, they see this in me and they explore it. They take me for these ballet lessons. They encourage me, right? So this innate desire to express myself, my spiritual self in the 3D world is natural and I keep going for it. But if I am told, it costs too much. You don't, you don't look like a ballerina. Bah, bah, bah. Everything's negative. Who do you think you are? Why should we get, teach you ballet lessons? Why, why do you think you deserve ballet lessons? Why, 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 right? Then the innate desire that I have begins to die within me. And yet, yet, and I feel the oppressiveness of it. And what am I being conditioned to do? I'm being conditioned to damper that inner light. I'm being conditioned to know it's bad to have these feelings. It's bad to want. I should just follow the crowd. I should figure out what my mother thinks I should do. Maybe I should do what my mother did, right? The fear, because we were put into the fear response. I'm telling you, there is a science to living a bold life. There is an absolute science to it. And if you are somebody, if this resonates with you, I'm so glad. If this has inspired you to think more deeply about the way that you think, if it has inspired you to stop living outside or below the veil of consciousness, if that idea at all just made you think, what does that mean? What does living below the veil of consciousness mean? You know, what does that mean? What does, it's not you, it's your programming mean. What does, there's no way for me to have any more than what I've had unless I begin to change and I begin to resonate with something I really do want, right? What does it mean to become exactly what the narcissist has patterned and conditioned me to be afraid to be? What if that's your breakthrough? That's, that was my breakthrough. Okay, big guy, you think I got a big mouth? Okay. You think I'm selfish? Okay. You think it's all about me? Okay. Okay. You can think whatever you want about me. I still want a divorce. And we're still selling the house. And I'm still moving the kids. And I'm still getting the kids, um, getting them into a new school. And I'm going to move, my, move on with my life. And I'm still going to date if I want to. Yep, I am everything you say I am. That is me no longer being afraid of the labels that were instilled in me to control me. Think what you want. If we could all live that out loud, and of course, when we do this type of work, we understand that we're looking to live a purpose life or a mission mission driven life meaning 
if you're doing this the right way, you're moving towards peace, love, and abundance for yourself and everyone. So you're not someone who wants to hurt people. You're not vindictive. You're not looking over your shoulder in the rearview mirror who hurt me and you've got a list like my uncle did. My uncle had a list on his wall of all the people who had ever hurt him. And it was a scary list. And I'm pretty sure my name was on it, okay? Scary stuff. And you know what? He lived a miserable life. A miser a recluse. He had no friends. He had no one that he could trust. It was in his own mind. What he focused on was hurting people because he was so hurt. I get it, but that's living below the veil. That's being reactive, right? You don't have to live that way, right? But again, we're not taught how to freaking think. We're not taught how to approach what's wrong. We're taught, don't talk about mommy. Don't talk about daddy. Don't talk about grandma's alcoholism. Don't do this. Blah, blah, blah. Don't, da, da, da. If I can't talk about it, then I can't heal it. And if I don't heal it, I mean, if I don't talk about it, I can't feel it. And if I can't feel it, I can't deal with it. So then I'm always trying to repress it and run away from it. And in the process of running away from it, I'm missing the opportunity to be the real me. No bueno. No bueno. So if this resonates with you, oh my God, from my toes, I'm so happy. Because if you end up finding the light within you, in spite of what negative, unconscious people think and feel about you, you've just hit the lottery. You've hit the emotional lottery. Emotional freedom begins with recognizing what's wrong. That's right. A lot of law of attraction teachers will say, oh, don't focus on the negative. You should not focus on the negative. It's you're wrong because no, hello, that is so wrong. Emotional freedom begins fixing what's wrong. That means I have to fix what's wrong. I have to reduce the negative charge or the, the really strong charge or the emotional charge to what's wrong. That's me conquering my fear. Okay. So step one, you want an amazing life? Figure out what you're afraid of. Figure out what you're afraid of, right? And then figure out what you need to do. And again, this is a Facebook live stream, so um, it's off the cuff, you know. Um, and I could throw a lot of information at you, and you might be inspired, and I think that's awesome, and that's the whole purpose, right, to infuse people with this idea of hope that's possible. Well, if she could do it, you know, without a job, quit college, and she could start her whole life, even though her family was really ticked off at her about the book that she wrote and ending this marriage and had problems with her children. And if she could do that, you know, without a job and having to work three days, uh, seven days a week, three jobs, and she could write a book under this type of stress and she could turn her life around and manifest an amazing relationship with an authentic man, you know, who, who empowers her and she can empower and she can believe in. If she can create this mission based business, certainly I can, of course you can, of course you can but it ain't easy. My life has not been easy, but you know what? I understand now why it had to be difficult because every time I fell, I was learning something new. I was crafting the ability to live a successful life. I was learning what I was doing wrong and I got so good at learning what I was doing wrong. I was able to create a process that people could follow right? And that's only because I fell on my face so many times and I had to sit back and look at myself and say, okay, what did you do wrong here? And, and what is it? What step did you go wrong at? Where was your focus, right? What were you trying to control that you shouldn't have been trying to control? Like, where did you give into fear versus abundance, right? When did you not clearly identify what relationship you wanted, what kind of a business you wanted, how much money you wanted to make, what kind of car you wanted to drive? Where did you want to live, right? You have to be that bold and throw away any idea that you're being selfish because you're claiming your birthright, you know? I heard an audio, I don't know who, it was on Clubhouse and someone was playing this audio. I caught the end of it. I don't know who used this term, but the term is you are an heir to the universe. And I thought, you bet your ass I am, right? I am, and so are you, we all are. The problem is we don't think we are. And then so we live below the veil of consciousness and these default, these default fears or pain versus pleasure, survival mode, are operating at such a high level because we're 95% subconscious 95% of the time. And so it's not your fault when you see someone who's struggling and inside a relationship that they can't get out of. They're stuck. It really isn't their fault. But there is a better way. So if you're somebody who would really like to know 
um, how to get out of this type of thinking and how to uh, uh, really manifest an amazing life. And you want tools. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Please check out my 12 week breakthrough coaching program. I have a live class going now, which is closed. The next class will launch in August, um, the first week of August on a Thursday. But if you're somebody who actually wants the tools now, you want to start this journey now, check out my on-demand class. It's, we're being, it's being offered at half off its original price. You can start these lessons today. We can get you out of survival mode, into learning mode, and you can, you can develop the tools you need to start living out loud. Um, and if you purchase the on-demand class, you actually even have an opportunity to join us live um, in August as well. But if you're sick, you've got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired because the challenges that you'll face um, reprogramming your brain, the challenges that you'll, you'll face confronting what triggers you into survival ain't going to be easy. But the good news is thousands of us have walked this path. Um, it works if you work it um, and it's there if you want it. So I encourage you to check that out. So namaste everybody until next time. Live out loud. Bye for now. Hey, if you love this content, don't forget to check out the next video and you can go to my website and take the codependency quiz. It's not uncommon for someone with codependency to look for someone to take care of, to look for someone to fix, to look for someone who has a multitude of issues so that they can find their way into their lives and figure out how to fix them.